Assalamu alaikum dear friends welcome back to travel lesson for you friends we are discussing about the bones of the upper limb you know and uh, we have uh, in the previous lecture we have discussed about the radius bone and uh, then we had also discussed about the all the external features of the humerus bone the clavicle the scapula the bones of the lower limb we have discussed about the external features of all these bone now in this lecture we are going to record about this hook like shape bone this is called the ulna bone as on the screen you can see there is written the ulna bone the fifth bone of your upper limb so ulna bone is mostly present in the medial compartment of uh, our upper limb so it is the bone of the upper limb the first important point about it it is the bone of the upper limb then it's present in the medial part of your forearm okay so if this is your forearm right it is present in the medial part why because radius was present in the lateral part proximally uh, it makes the humero radio ulnar joint with the humerus and the radius and we know that here is or if you see here if i keep it like this this is the humerus bone right this is the radius uh, ulna bone and then we have here the radius bone so here we know that first of all proximally it makes a joint with the humerus joint with the humerus bone so that's why we call it the humero ulnar joint right or we simply call it the rest joint right so this is the trochlear notch and this is the trochlea and this is the rest joint or we call it the humero ulnar joint and then it also we know that it makes a joint with the head of the radius bone so that's why we collectively call it there is the radio humero radio ulnar joint we call it the humero radio ulnar joint and distally it makes the corpo radio ulnar joint or which is also known as the rest joint so here you know that there is the corpo radio ulnar joint and here is the humero radio ulnar joint on the screen there is also the present how to determine the bone is the right bone or the left bone either this uh, ulna bone is from your right hand or from your left upper limb so for the side determination that's so simple first of all you should know that the upper end of this bone is a little bit hook like right so i have written there the upper end is hook like so you have to keep if you know nothing about this bone you should keep the upper end the hook like part of this bone is present superiorly so this is the upper end and this is the lower end it's a little bit broader and it's a very narrow and the lower end then the trochlear notch should be interiorly you know from the previous lecture about the humerus bone this was the trochlea right and this is the trochlear notch this depressed part is the trochlear notch so you should keep this trochlear notch interiorly and then the radial notch laterally so here is the radial notch you should keep it laterally you will very simply recognize the bone is the right or the left how look carefully i told you that the hook like part is upper the trochlear notch anteriorly and the radial notch laterally so let's do the practice first look carefully if i keep the trochlear notch anteriorly and the radial notch here is medially so no this bone is not from the right forearm let's do another practice the trochlear notch anteriorly and the radial notch laterally so this bone is from your left forearm right what you have to do you have to keep the trochlear notch anteriorly and the radial notch which is present in it laterally why because the radial bone is present in the lateral part of your bone of your upper limb so radial bone will be here right this is the radius and this is the ulna so the radial notch should be kept laterally and the trochlear notch should be kept anteriorly you will easily recognize the bone is from the right forearm or the left forearm as you know that this bone is also a typical long bone it must have an upper end it must have a shaft and it must have a lower end you can see on the screen also what are the external features which are present in the upper end of this bone this uh, uh, ulna bone so first we have this bone has processes and this bone has notches so in the upper end of this bone the two important features are present first there are processes 
these two processes right and then there are two notches present there right this is the notch and this is the notch so how many processes two processes how many notches two notches let's go for the lecture there is a process which is called the olecranon process and there is a process which is called the coronoid process so the upper process right the superior process is called the olecranon process so this one is the olecranon process and this lower process is called the coronoid process so this is the coronoid process done what about the olecranon process first of all it is the superior process okay this one upper process then it, pro it projects upward anteriorly if you keep the bone in its anatomical position you will see that this process projects upward and anteriorly look this process projects upward and anteriorly so hold this process is called the olecranon process hold this process my friends please follow my fingers this process is called the olecranon process and this process holy suli is called the coronoid process so there is the olecranon process process i hope you understand this process has five surfaces what are those superior surface so let me color all the surfaces there is the superior surface of this olecranon process right this is the superior surface then there is a medial surface and what is that surface this is the medial surface of that process right friends this is the medial surface and then there is a lateral surface so this will be the lateral surface of this process right and then there is also posterior surface so we should not forget there is a posterior surface right this should be the posterior surface and my dear and near to my heart friends there is an anterior process so surface so there are how many surfaces five surfaces what are those this hole which i have colored is called the olecranon process and this process projects upward and anteriorly and this process has five surfaces superior posterior lateral sorry lateral medial anterior five surfaces there is an anterior surface which is articular right with the trochlea right so this is the articular surface okay you can see right this is the interior surface and this is articular right and it forms an upper trochlear notch so this uh, this holy soli this is upper uh, this is trochlear notch so the trochlear notch is formed by two combination of two different two processes the lower part of this uh, notch is formed by the uh, coronoid process and the upper part of this notch or this uh, uh, or uh, this uh, trochlear notch is formed by this olecranon process so we say the interior surface of olecranon process makes the upper part of the uh, trochlear notch right i hope you understand then there is a posterior surface then there is a lateral surface then there is superior surface medial surface so how many surfaces it has it has five surfaces done then we go for coronoid process and what is coronoid process this lower process is called the coronoid process and this is called the coronoid process holy soli which i am holding in my hand this is coronoid process this coronoid process is the inferior process and it forms the uh, inferior to the olecranon it is present inferior to the olecranon process right and it has four surfaces superior anterior lateral and medial so let's color it this is the superior surface of this bone this process right then there is the inferior surface right so we have superior surface inferior surface the the medial surface and the lateral surface of this coronoid process okay superior surface is articular yes we know that superior surface is totally articular it makes articular part of this bone right so this is the superior surface of the coronoid process it's articular it marks the lower part of the uh, the the, the uh, trochlear notch so this is the trochlear notch and the upper part of this trochlear notch is formed by the recurrent process and the lower part of this trochlear notch is formed by the coronoid process 
there is an anterior uh, surface so this will be the anterior surface and it is triangular it forms the lower part of the ulnar tuberosity so here is the anterior process and it makes the lower part of the ulnar tuberosity okay we will see that there is a lateral surface and this lateral surface has a radial notch in it so you can see here there is a depressed part which is called the radial notch because the head of the radius bone will fit here and will make the joint here so this is called the radial notch so here is the radial notch present right friends then there is a medial surface okay here is the medial surface a little bit rough surface so this medial surface okay so we discussed about the processes how many processes upper end has two the olecranon process and the coronite process then my dear friends it has two notches and how many true clear notch and radial notch you can see this big notch okay follow the pointer this is the trochlear notch and here is the radial notch you can see it also here there there is the trochlear notch and here is the radial notch so how many notches two notches are present there the radial notch is laterally the trochlear notch is anteriorly done friends then we go towards the shaft of this bone right this is the shaft of this bone the shaft of the uh, ulna bone has three surfaces and three borders first of all how many borders three borders there is the lateral border okay let me see it here okay there is a lateral border there is an anterior border and then there is a posterior border so how many borders it has it has three borders there is an anterior border which is sharp border there is a lateral border and then there is a posterior border so this will be the lateral this is posterior this is anterior right friends anterior border lateral border posterior border and then it has three surfaces there is an anterior surface there is a medial surface there is a posterior surface in its medial surface there is a nutrient foramen present there which i have written there so the nutrient foramen for the ulna bone is present in the anterior surface of the shaft of the bone so the shaft has what external features it has three surfaces and three borders the borders are the lateral border the anterior border and posterior border anterior lateral posterior and surfaces there is a lateral surface there is a medial surface and then there is a posterior surface okay friends now let's go for the lower end of the external features of the lower end of this bone what are those there is th this, this lower end is totally called the head of this bone right friends so the lower end is totally the head of the bone okay this bone is kept upside down in our body right this is the bone which is kept upside down so friends this is the head of the bone right and the head has a stylite process so if you uh, see here i will uh, color it i will shade it here this is called the stylite process and the stylite process is present uh, posterior medially right stylite process is present posterior medially this is stylite process and then there is a groove present there right you can see here there is a groove present there so this is the groove which is present here right friends so you can see here this is the head right this is the head this is the stylite process and this is the groove which is present in the lower end of the ulna bone so friends these were the external features of the ulna bone we discussed about the upper end two processes and two notches then shaft three surfaces three borders the lower end head stylite process and groove and that's all about the ulna bone external features the next lectures we will go towards the carpals and metacarpals and then phalanges see you guys in the next lecture till then allah hafiz